From Los Angeles, it's the Tom Mike Show. Okay. It is. And now, and now, here he is. Uh, thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And a listener sends us this story from the Tacoma News Tribune. Imagine a world where mothers could take a few months away from their jobs after the birth or adoption of a child without losing their jobs. A world in which both mothers and fathers could spend time at home during that child's first year while, get this, still drawing most of their wages. I hope you were only imagining that. A world in which parents could work part-time without changing employers and losing their health benefits. Imagine a world in which all parents could place their children in high-quality child care provided by well-educated professionals for little or no cost. There's no such thing as something for little or no cost. Somebody would be paying for it. And you know who would be paying for it? All the people who don't have children. Because people without children pay more in taxes than people who have them. So guess what? Those of us who don't have children would be paying to fulfill the dreams and wishes of those who want to. Imagine that world. Imagine the world where your taxes go up to subsidize the lives of other people. Imagine that. Little or no cost. This piece goes on. Sounds good, doesn't it? And no, it doesn't. And it probably would sound truly imaginary to most U.S. parents who face often excruciating choices between work and family life. It would certainly sound like a fantasy to Amy and Mark, both of whom work in a downtown Seattle hotel. Neither had parental leave when their son Zach was born. In theory, Amy could have stayed home with Zach for the first few months, but they couldn't live on Mark's income. So she went back to work. And since they can't afford child care, they manage their work schedules to care for Zach. Mark leaves for work at 6 a.m. and works until 3.30 p.m. Amy takes the bus downtown with Zach, meets Mark at the hotel, and hands over Zach. Mark and Zach then ride the bus back to their apartment. Amy starts her shift and comes home after midnight. Well, you know what I have to say about Mark and Amy? They can't afford Zach. They weren't ready to have Zach. And I don't think it's up to the rest of us to pay so that they can enjoy their time with their little baby. It's not our problem. What Mark and Amy needed to do was work a little longer, save a little more, get their careers a little further along, make sure their relationship is solid as a rock, and have a baby later when they are better prepared to have one. Imagine a world where people took personal responsibility, where they didn't whine after they made bad decisions, and then we refused to pay to help them out of their bad decisions. Imagine that world. I'll write a piece for you. This piece continues here. Or consider Amiko and Jim. Her boss let her take three months off work without pay when she had a baby. They made it through, but only by exhausting their savings and having Jim work overtime. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. 
just when Amico says she needed him the most for coping with a newborn. When Amico went back to work after three months, she reduced her hours, and Jim used up his sick days to share the caregiving. I hate that word. Now, out of both savings and flexibility at work, they have to put the baby into full-time child care, which at $900 per month, that's all? It's a pretty good deal. Is that 30 bucks a day? <laughs> it still gives Amico sticker shock. Again, folks, clearly, if you burn through your savings, you aren't ready to have a baby. You are ready. What's amazing about this is that people don't say these things about, you know, what if a couple bought a Mercedes Benz and uh, Justin had to work every day at McDonald's and had to work 16 hours and come home. And then his wife, Jennifer, had to go into Burger King, and she had to work 12 hours just so they could pay for it. And they fell behind on the payments. Nobody feels sorry for people like that. Why do you feel sorry for people who don't think ahead, don't plan their lives? They simply pop out children and worry about how they're going to pay for it later. Children are expensive. And unlike a luxury car, you can't take them back and trade them in for a Prius down the lot. Though I'm sure some people are tempted. Prius, that's a Toyota hybrid. He's like, what's that? It's a car. Okay. A cheaper car. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's amazing how if, if people spend too much money on clothes or shoes or their credit card bills go through the roof, we don't feel sorry for them, but suddenly when it's a baby... Oh, we should be, uh, we, employers should be paying people to stay home with their babies. People shouldn't have to burn through all this money and work so many hours. You know what? They should have saved and worked all those hours before they had a baby. You see, it's all about the bad planning or lack of planning or unwillingness to plan or unwillingness to think ahead. These people should be penalized, not helped. Too bad. You have to work too many hours? Too goddamn bad. Tough. Whose fault is it that you had a baby too young before your career was together, before you put enough money away? Whose fault is that? To me, if you're going to have a child, you should have your career together. You have been together with the person you're with at least five years. You should have money in the bank. If you're planning on having more than one child, you should have that house picked out, the down payment paid, the mortgage set, and you should have it all budgeted out so that you can afford to make your house payments, spend time with your child, have a career so you can pay for all of this. And if that sounds like it's too much, then you shouldn't be having a baby. But to, to keep raising people's taxes so uh, the, these people can work at their job at the hotel and then uh, maybe take a year off from the hotel and the hotel has to keep paying. So what do they do, raise room rates in Seattle? We, we're in Seattle fairly frequently. Do I want to pay more of my room rates so people can stay home with their baby for a year? No, I don't. Do I want to pay more in taxes so people who don't plan their lives correctly will be bailed out? No, I don't want to do that. I don't. I want people to think ahead and be responsible. That's what I want. You know, we're always imagining this world where people can do anything they want, irresponsible or whatever, make no plans, save no money, not work hard, not think, not get educations, and then we are supposed to bail them out somehow, or the employer is supposed to bail them out some, uh, somehow. And then, of course, it's at little or no cost. No, it isn't at little or no cost. We're all paying for you and your little ego trip, your little crumb cruncher, your little Xerox copy. We're all supposed to pay so you can do that. You know what? We don't want to. Amazing. Anyway, I could go on and read this story, but uh, you know what? It's just more of the Pacific Northwest 
pussified, purse-swinging whining that I, I, it just drives me crazy. It's all about people not taking responsibility, not planning ahead. Let's have a world where nobody's responsible for anything. The few people who are responsible work hard, plan ahead, save up. They should pay for all the people who don't. Do you agree with that? Some like us. 1-800-5800-TIME. Some like us. I totally agree with you that uh, women can be attention whores, especially for the fact that I live in the city of attention whores, Los Angeles. We invented attention whoring here. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio with you. Ah, uh, yes. It's George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Give me my cigarettes, please. Tom! Yes! Hey, what's happening? Not much. George, calling from Akron, Ohio. Cool. Long time no here. Thank you. Hey, uh, I, I just wanted to tell you, man, that I think no matter how much work you put into it, as far as, as your finances and your house and whatnot, you're never ready for a baby. Ever. That doesn't mean you can't be prepared. Well, I still don't think you're ever prepared. Well, certainly financially you can be prepared. Well, uh... Because it's, it's, it, the costs are fixed costs unless the child has some kind of long-term illness. And then those things are covered by insurance, by the way. Yeah, but, but as far as the costs of feeding, housing, and clothing a child, uh, those are predictable. Yeah, for the most part. You could have that stuff ready to go when you finally procreate. Right. You could. I am tired of the whiners who want to pop out kids before they are financially ready. Oh, absolutely. Or emotionally mature, if, if, and then they want the rest of us to pay. No, exactly. I, I agree with you on that 100%, because I don't want to pay for anybody else's kid. I want to pay for mine. I, I, I have one child, and I want to pay for one child. I don't want to pay for all the little, uh, pardon my French, bastard sons yeah. around the world. There's more and more of them. You know? Yep. Hey, good to hear from you again, Tom. Take me out with a ball and rip. There you go, George. <coughs> Greg on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom. How's the wine cellar, buddy? The wine cellar is uh, uh, bursting at the seams, baby. Excellent. Well, listen, I just got done with the first week of my 12 weeks off for my maternity leave with my wife. I'm sick and de to death of hearing all these little whiners sit there saying, Oh, the government's going to pay for it. Kids are so expensive. If you don't freaking save and put money away, I hope that you can't afford bread, man. It's not tough to put money away in the bank. All these punks that sit there and say, oh, it's life that's still so hard. You know what? It's so easy to put a little bit of money away, and then when you want to have a kid, you actually got the money. I can take time off. I can, you know, do stuff around my house. I can think around in my shop remodeling my house right now. I'm sick to death of all these little whiny punks sitting there wanting to leech off of my tax dollars to fit, you know, feed their little snot dribbling bastards, man. Yeah, I I'm totally to agree. Away. I totally agree. I'm getting tired of hearing these people complaining. Look, if, if you're not up to the task, you shouldn't be inflicting your little brats on the world. No, and the thing is, you know, it's real easy to put money away. You know, you can have a, a minimum wage job, and if you put 5 to 10% away a month, pretty soon, hey, you got a few grand in there. And so when it comes time to, you know, take responsibility and not have a kid, you know, when you're not prepared for it, it's real easy. You know, one of the things that you preach out here is, you know, don't, you know, forget to wrap that rascal. That's right. You know what? Everybody loves to have sex. But if you do it unprepared, you're, you're just a little snot-nosed punk kid, and you're a pussy if you can't do the right thing. Wait, get married later on. One of the things you preach about getting married after you're 25, smartest thing in the world. Having kids when you're closer to 30 so you can afford them, smartest thing in the world. You are one of the greatest minds of our time today, Tom. And all these people really do it just need to flip and listen to you. Quit being a little pussy, snot-nosed punk. Get a real job and suck it up. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you for that, Greg. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. 
It's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you, buddy? Okay, James. I can't believe the conversation just came up. My uh, This cow that lives next door to me, she's 24. She's about to pop out her third kid. She's single, and she's sponging off the government and everybody else. And I'm so tired of paying taxes for this. I mean, it just seems like the dumb just reproduce over and over and over. Yes, but they know that the uh, more intelligent, industrious people will bail them out. I'm so tired of it. How can we get this law changed? Do you know here in Los Angeles there are high schools with daycare setters? So the little 14-year-old sluts who get knocked up can bring their little brats to school? It's ridiculous. It's got to stop somewhere. Why do we make it easy for these goddamn whores uh, to pop out uh, Xerox copies of themselves? It just seems to never end. And then, like, I'm the bad guy for questioning it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole thing is screwed up, you know? I mean, one after another after another. I mean, one is a mistake, sure. Live with it. Deal with it. Don't make the mistake again. Two, you're a retard. Three, man, you should have your tubes clipped. Well, I say they should all have abortions. And uh, those of you who uh, think abortion is wrong, you know what? Then you must be a religious person, and that means you should stop banging around until you get married. Thanks a lot, Tom. You have a great night. James, thank you. Christy on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Christy. You're fabulous. I am indeed. I know. You know that. I do. My comment is uh, most of these people, we're not only financially going to be paying for it, but the kids are going to pay for it. No, but let me tell you something. We, nobody cares about kids in this society. Uh, we, we, we use kids as a convenient excuse for the FCC to crack down on radio and TV or to crack down on so-called pornography or to spend money on what is allegedly education, which is really putting money into the pockets of teachers' unions around the country. Yep. But, but the reality is we don't give a rat's ass about children. But even the people having children only care about fulfilling themselves. They don't give a rat's ass about the quality of life that those kids are going to have to live. They don't care. No, do you know any child, any adult that says, oh, I love my parents because they worked, you know, 60 hours a week when I was growing up, and I never saw them. No, if I hate my father, he's a, he's a SOB. I never saw him. And they never saved up for college for me because they were so busy working. Kids don't get cheaper. They get more expensive. Well, you're pretty much describing the story of my life, dear. I had to drop out of college because I went broke. My father wouldn't support me. The excuse he gave is because he didn't want me going into broadcasting. <laughs> the reality is he uh, would never admit he didn't have enough money and he hadn't saved anything. Well, my parents were rednecks and never thought that any of their kids might possibly want to go to college, so I put myself through it. Mm-hmm. But um, they never once. I mean, I and I hate the man. <laughs> yeah. So this, do these people think that they want to have kids that grow up to hate them? Well, and uh, you know, my father, in order to uh, make our lives quote unquote better, moved us from the center of the city, uh, 50 miles away, to a tract home in the middle of nowhere, and what looked like a sand dune. <laughs> and then he commuted five hours round trip every day to work. We never saw him. Life got worse, not better. No. Yeah, how about a little thinking and planning on that? Because the people who have kids, they don't think and plan. All they care about is having a baby and a baby shower. But Tom like his show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Yes, another whiny article from a newspaper in the Pacific Northwest. In this case, the Tacoma News Tribune. Suggesting that people should be able to have their kids, take time off, get paid most or all of their wages. The funniest thing I ever heard was when we were in Portland, somebody asked to be taken out with the African tribal chant, and the audience at the event was singing that song. 
And you had to be there and hear that. I couldn't sing that song, but the guys in the audience could. And clapping along with it, that's right. <laughs> one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Ah, uh, do you care, Joe? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I think you are a real kid hater. Why do you say that? You know, unless you like kids, you would realize that anybody, any normal person that wants to have a kid really badly, that did not have any kids, if he wants to have a kid, it's not, he, he loves that kid. He wants to have the, you know, that's how he is. Unless he loves he, that kid, he should have it when he can afford it. But you know what? Maybe you're right that it shouldn't come out of taxes, but I'm going to give you an example. Look at the... Orthodox Jewish community, where they have people that have between 12 and 20 kids. And none of those people work. Not the husband, not the wife. And they have... They have